Hello, this is Jim, and I live in Texas. And if this video appears on YouTube, and uh, you see it, that is proof positive that I am an electronic genius. And let me explain why. It's a strong claim to make, I know. But here's the deal. A few of you might have seen a video I had up for uh, a couple of hours earlier, a few days ago, but testing my HiPack, uh, excuse me, my Aptek GLVS high def camera, which is a, actually a fairly uh, inexpensive $180 camera that I got from Amazon. It mounts, it's mounted on my handlebars and it's filming this ride. Uh, the reason I got it is because it was reasonably priced and it had a uh, mic jack. Uh, after uh, a lot of thought, I decided I did not want to go down the road of putting a helmet, a camera actually in my helmet. Uh, when I was at the chicken swap in Tyler with uh, some of the other vloggers, I, I saw a close up, you know, their camera arrangements and they were just not something that I would be comfortable with. So I said, well, what I'll do is I'll get, a, I'll find a camcorder that was small enough to mount on my RAM mount uh, that I already had to mount, uh, I already had a camera ram mount on my handlebars, so I'll just get a mic and plug it in and I'll, I'll narrate. Well, I did that the other day and I made some unfortunate, unintentionally bad, un, you know, un impolite remarks. But fortunately, the, the mic uh, that I'm using is so over modulated that people could barely understand them. And, uh, and it was horrible, and uh, plus I, I said some things that were incorrect, so. I took that down. Uh, so what I've done, this is the same arrangement, except that I, using my uh, my genius of electronics, have made a nine decibel pad, what's called a pad in electronics. Uh, to uh, reduce the level of the mic, because what was happening was the mic was overdriving the, uh, the camera. This, this little camera does not have an audio automatic gain control, and the particular mic I got for $14 at Radio Shack is a good mic, I think, but it was just putting out more power uh, than, uh, than the camera could handle. It, it worked okay as long as it wasn't in my helmet, but as soon as I put it anywhere in my helmet, Apparently my helmet and my voice frequencies are such that my helmet is like a giant amplifier or speaker enclosure. So it was overdriving the mic horribly, which was overdriving the camera horribly, which made me sound, uh, you know, like uh, Darth Vader with a bad head cold. And uh, the only person who could even understand it was wooden chair. He didn't understand it. He interpreted what I was saying to be wooden chair sucks when it was really wooden chairs is a great guy. So I felt bad about that. Don't kill me, mister. Don't kill me. Thank you for not killing me. So what I'm doing here, I can run it up just a little bit, get a little bit of speed on uh, 40 miles an hour. But just around the block here to see if this camera now will work with a little bit of wind noise. I think now from my uh, initial test that 90 b is probably not quite enough. I probably need to redo it and boost it up to uh, 12 or 15 dB, but I think this may be usable. Uh, it was in the sky test that I did. I mentioned this camera, it said it's recording in 720p with any stabilization, which my old uh, flip camera didn't have stabilization, which you can tell if you <laughs> ever watch one of my videos. Uh, hopefully this will be more stable now. It's, it's almost nighttime now, and this camera is not advertised as a nighttime camera, and it, it's probably, you know, the video quality is probably not going to be there, but that's a known, if you read the reviews on Amazon, you know, that shouldn't be a surprise. For $180, you know, I'm willing to live with compromised night vision. Uh, I was almost about to buy a $300 Canon because it's so hard to find camcorders now that even have external mic jacks. They used to all have them. But uh, I figured this for $180, if I crash and smash it to bits, uh, you know, it'll hurt, but it won't hurt nearly as bad as if it was a $300 camera. So here I am, back at uh, Casa Gym in Texas. Uh, we'll uh, shut it down here and see how our video came out.
Okay, let's see if this will focus at all. This is the uh, Aptek AIPTEK GVS 720 1080p camera. The, uh, the mod I was talking about in the, uh, in the uh, first clip was this device here. All I did was I used two resistors. One in uh, one across the uh, between the mic uh, hot lead and the ground, and one in, in parallel with it. Excuse me, one in series with it. Those two together with this uh, simple formula uh, produce an audio pad, which is just like a, a, a an attenuator. Now I, I picked uh, numbers for 9 dB. Clearly, that wasn't enough because uh, when we got noisy there, we started to get overdriving and overmodulation again. So I will do another one of these with. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, a different uh, set of resistors to give me more, maybe in the 18 to 20 dB. And I'll do a third one to give me 60 dB so I can use it in the airplane and plug it into the intercom system with a patch cord that I already have. Uh, I'm filming this with my flip camera, so it's a little shakier, not having image stabilization. But anyway, the resistors are in these, one resistor is in the male jack and one is in the female jack here. I obviously need to make something that's physically more robust than this. Uh, which I will do on the next, uh, after this, you know, I, I figured that I would probably guess wrong on the prototype. Uh, as I, I wasn't even sure it would really work, but it did because, you know, although it did overmodulate some, it produced at least usable audio, at least uh, up until I got about 40. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is make maybe a 20 dB one and try that, make it more robust. Also, I probably need to get, if I'm really serious about vlogging, I need to get a uh, full face helmet. I think that flip helmets are noisy. Mine certainly is as noisy as can be. Uh, I think a flip helmet would be uh, quite a bit uh, quieter. Uh, Shock All Now uh, has a real quiet helmet. It's that Bell, uh, uh, Bell helmet. It's uh, smell approved, I believe. And uh, it's like you can get it on Amazon for less than $100. I may order one of those. Anyway, this is the camera. One of the disadvantages is this screen has to be deployed for it to be on. Uh, it has a 1080p mode, but there's no image stabilization in the 1080p mode, so I don't use that mode. 720p in what they call the DVD format has it. Uh, another disadvantage is, is that it makes MOV files, which uh, uh, are not as convenient for me as AVI files that come out of this flip would be. Uh, I do have a program, Nero 8, and also QuickTime Pro that can edit them. Uh, I paid $30 for QuickTime Pro, and as far as I'm concerned, it sucks. They're just powered off, it timed out. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend QuickTime Pro. I don't, unless Maybe I just, you know, I'm not a cool enough kid to understand how it's supposed to work. But uh, on the uh, video that I tested, I had it too far to the right, didn't I? Because you couldn't really see what was going on. But anyway, that's my arrangement. This is my high-tech... Uh, uh, audio pad so I'm, I feel like I'm moving in the right direction toward becoming a real vlogger this is Jim and I live in Texas oh I'll pay I'll post a uh, a link to the uh, schematic and a little article I found to tell you how to how to calculate the values of the, these resistors and uh, how they work so uh, I'll, I'll include that in the show notes or you know in the info box or whatever they call it here on YouTube uh, this is Jim and I live in Texas